Australia's Guide to Australia. Or whatever we end up calling this thing. Welcome back to the Adventures of the Blue Hat. That sounds awful. Let's call it um, walkabouting, walkabouters guide to Australia. Yeah, that way it sounds like touristy. Well, anyway, here we are in Melbourne, Melbourne, marvelous Melbourne. Surprisingly, it's not raining. This is one of the two percent days of the year where we get a little bit of not rain. It's just called drizzle. Melbourne. Melbourne used to be called, almost used to be called, Batmania. Welcome back to Outback Adventure. What were we gonna call it? Outback Walkabouters Guide to Australia. Welcome back. Um, this is the reason why Melbourne was almost called Batmania. John Batman. He was the son of a convict. Convicts drained to Australia from all over the place, but no place more than Gotham shitty. Insane jesters, beak-nosed mob bosses, crowless scarecrows, and reincarnated Egyptologists packed the penal colony. A solution to unflux the influx of twisted crooks was to arrest William Batman, the lone vigilante who was hastening the law under his own wings by arresting the crims. They arrested Batman, and his wife, and his son, John Batman, and tossed them on the next convict ship bound for Australia. Off the coast, fearing prison life for their boy, the parents Moses John into a basket, and he sailed away. To Van Diemen's Land, a Tasmanian penal colony, John Batman was raised among convicts and Aborigine children. He loved their fireside dreamtime stories about rainbows, serpents, Vegemite creeks, and the Bunyip, a near-extinct marsupial who lurks in riverbeds and billabongs. In fact, when the day came to escape Van Diemen's, Batman and his supermates donned the disguise of Bunyip's to Bunyip aboard a schooner and Bunyip her to the mainland. They run aground on the modern site of Melbourne, but named it Batmania. I'm not joking, Batmania. The Yarra River was a shrunken drinking supply, but the settlers were confident of rain. It was Melbourne after all and a simple treaty between them and the local Aborigines should have been easy to strike up. Land in exchange for blankets, axes, cameras, you know, the usual. But the Warrandari Jiri people had an additional request. They claimed the Yarra River once roared along until a bunyip stopped it upriver, causing the drought. If Batman wanted to rent the land, he would have to confront the bunyip and clear the river or confront the river and clear the bunyip, or bunyip the clear and river the confront. Batman's mind harked back to the penal campfire stories about the giant monster. He swallowed his fears and digested his tears and trekked up the river to face whatever had stopped the flow, hopefully just global warming. But no, it was the bunyip's giant ass that had stopped the flow. Oi, would you mind moving? were Batman's last words before being walloped by the mighty womp of the Bunyip's fist. 
Batman grabbed a branch to soften the second blow that never came because by standing up, the Bunyip had released the mighty flow of the Yarra River, tossing and turning Batman and the Bunyip like the spin cycle of a washing machine. If one had been invented, smoothly Batman was able to surf on the branch, back down the river towards his settlement. Ah, but when John Batman returned to Melbourne, or Batmania, he found this guy, John Faulkner, setting up a settlement, like right next to his. You know when you go to a beach, and you set up your towel and you sit down, and then someone else comes to the same beach and sits down right next to you on their towel? Even though there's a whole beach there, it's, it was like this with John Faulkner. So John Faulkner renamed Batmania to Melbourne after a Floridian town where he grew up. In fact, he went on to design the new Melbourne the same as the old. So nowadays, if you travel to Melbourne, Florida, you won't be able to tell them apart. The old footage you watched at the start was actually of Melbourne, Florida in all her bustling trolley glory. And John Batman's Bunyip story was thrown out, along with himself, to the Warrenjeri people. But they regarded him as a true hero. So, I take my Edmund Barton hat off to John Batman. Time to leave Melbourne now, I think. I would kill for a Starbucks. So if I happen to end up back in America, I wouldn't complain at all. Thanks. Nice.